eyes, get back out in the world. And so these are the types of uh, issues that a lot of the patients coming with this uh, concern are raising. Um, and don't uh, forget that you are not alone out there. You know, more than 50% of people are dealing with this kind of issue, uh, but have not actually discussed that with a doctor as of yet. And so it is a very normal thing to uh, have um, and definitely something that uh, is time for you to bring up to our attention so that we can actually help you. So here's our agenda for the night, um, going through the different uh, uh, conditions of bladder and bowel control concerns. I'll talk a little bit about our care pathway, how we individualize our care for you. I'll talk about some treatment options and then go over a little bit regarding the inner stem system through Medtronic. Uh, and then we'll definitely open up the floor for questions and answers at the end. So as I mentioned, remember when going through this condition, you are not alone. One in six adults out there have overactive bladder. Think about this. If you, uh, you know, many of you out there on the call tonight may wear glasses um, or have trouble with asthma. Um, you know, those are very common issues that you think are normal throughout our population. Um, and about double to triple that many people actually are suffering from overactive bladder. Um, and one in 12 adults actually has issues with fecal incontinence, still more than both uh, vision and asthma. So this is a very very common issue um, that you should not be uh, embarrassed by. This is something that does affect a huge part of our population and therefore you know, is a huge uh, problem that we want to help solve. So you know, many of you might ask, what is normal? What isn't normal? You know, is it normal for me to have frequent accidents? Is it normal uh, to have to go to the bathroom now all the time? Um, you know, these are probably things that are feeling or that you may feel are pretty common for you. Um, are you constantly monitoring how much you eat or drink? Are you using pads? Um, do you feel like you have to basically plan your social life around the ability to get to bathrooms quickly? Um, do you know where every bathroom uh, from you know, every five miles around your house, you know, how to stop at different locations to get there? Um, if so, this is definitely something your uh, body is trying to give you a warning. It's telling you this is something you need to listen to. So essentially, when you consider uh, how the bladder and the mind works, um, essentially our issue with overactive bladder is a miscommunication, a breakdown in that pathway between the brain and the bladder. Um, and that can lead to you know, common uh, bladder issues. Same thing occurs when we talk about fecal incontinence. Um, you know, there is a breakdown in that pathway of communication between the brain and the bowel, and that's where you get these uh, breakdown, uh, right, these issues with incontinence. You get problems where uh, you're not able to control those urges that occur. And so what causes incontinence? Um, you know, we have all sorts of different inputs going into these. You know, you've got your uh, normal daily habits, what you're doing, what you're eating. Um, you know, are you consuming high amounts of caffeine, spicy foods, alcohol? Those can all contribute significantly to overactive bladder symptoms. Medications and supplements that you may take on a regular basis can also interfere with that communication pathway, uh, create breakdown, um, and allow overactive bladder symptoms or fecal incontinence to uh, become a problem. Uh, physical mobility, are you not able to get to the bathroom in time? That's a very common issue that many face. Um, and in reality, it's a lot easier to fix problems with the bladder and bowel than it would be with your mobility. And so certainly an area we can improve on. Uh, very common conditions leading to uh, incontinence will be after pregnancy and childbirth. Uh, if you've ever had radiation treatment, pelvic floor injuries, other surgeries that may interfere with the uh, communication pathway, all of these can lead to those problems. And so in regards to different bladder control issues, you know, there are three separate types really that we're going to talk about. We have you know, stress incontinence, retention, overactive bladder. Um, and so let's take a closer look at each of these. Stress incontinence is really that symptom of, you know, urine leaking out when you have a physical pressure or change in physical you know, anatomy that leads to the leakage of urine. Uh, this is extremely common and occurs when there's an increased pressure on the bladder as a result of that cough or sneeze um, or lifting something heavy and using those abdominal muscles. Uh, and this leads to a sudden loss of urine. Stress incontinence is typically due to weakened muscles um, and damaged pelvic floor muscles. 
um, and certainly things such as uh, pregnancy and childbearing um, and other surgical type conditions can lead to these problems. Urinary retention, on the other hand, um, happens more when you can't tell that your bladder is full or ultimately unable to actually empty your bladder despite knowing it's full. Um, this can be uh, very bothersome and very painful for many people, uh, and it leads them to often leak without understanding that they actually needed to go to the bathroom uh, before that occurred. Many people require the use of a catheter, and it may or may not be due to something physical or an obstruction causing that problem. It may be, once again, a communication pathway issue where uh, you cannot tell the bladder that it is time to, um, to empty and actually then uh, signal it to go. And then we have overactive bladder. Overactive bladder, um, you know, specifically with urge incontinence or just symptoms of urgency and frequency. Um, these are very uh, important terms um, that you'll hear over and over for our talk. And so urge incontinence is that sudden urge to go to the bathroom. Um, it results in the actual loss of urine. Um, and so this can occur uh, you know, where you're on the way to the bathroom and you just, you know, you got five steps to the bathroom. The second you saw the toilet, you know, urine started leaking out. Um, many times patients are going to start wearing pads, protective garments. You know, you may be um, having to keep a spare pad in your back pocket whenever you go out of the house. You may be finding that you're wearing different color clothing uh, because you know you're going to have these leakage episodes. Um, many people comment that you know, they'll be uh, on their way home and the second they pull into their garage and start stepping out of their car, they immediately start having that need to go to the bathroom. You know, once again, this is a miscommunication between the brain and the bladder. Uh, urgency and frequency are similar, um, only they don't occur with the leakage of urine at that time, but these are also very common symptoms of overactive bladder um, that many of the treatment options we're going to talk about tonight will be able to help. And then chronic fecal incontinence. Um, this is definitely uh, uh, another area of huge burden to many patients out there. Um, you know, this is, uh, mo you know, most of the time it only happens uh, during like a bout of diarrhea for many people, but for others, this can be, uh, and especially chronic fecal incontinence, this is a recurring condition. This is something that happens on a regular basis where they either don't have the ability to hold back that urge to, you know, have a bowel movement, or um, they don't have that feeling of when they have to actually go. Um, this may be just small amounts uh, of defecation occurring, or this can be in large amounts, even just little streaking in the underwear can certainly be part of that. Um, and so certainly if you're always worried about whether or not there's going to be some form of you know, embarrassing leakage, um, you know, whether it's urine or stool, this is definitely an issue that we can help with. And so, like I said, you know, hope is there. There's, this is definitely nothing to uh, accept as normal. There is something you can actually do about it. And so, we're going to talk a little bit about the pathway that uh, you know, we at Advanced Urology uh, follow and have created for our patients. You know, my main goal is to ensure that patients can get back to living their life the way they have always wanted to, uh, the way they expected they would be when they got to you know, uh, this part of their life. Um, I bet none of you really expected that you, know, you would be getting into uh, later years or even younger years and, and suddenly experiencing you know, a life ruled by the bathroom. Um, and so this is a very uh, important part of my practice and it's near and dear to the heart. And this is something that really brought me into urology that I can you know, be a resource for patients to help fix these issues. Um, and so, you know, part of the process starts with that diagnosis, you know, actually, uh, you know, coming to uh, a consultation and, and learning that this is truly indeed the issue you have. There are different steps we take to diagnose um, and, and different testings we may go through. Um, and those will be things that'll be individualized per each patient, um, you know, really to, to hone in on what your specific, um, you know, uh, symptoms and issues may be. And so we'll break down the rest of these here um, and look at each one um, going forward. So, you know, certainly lifestyle and dietary changes are going to be a huge part for everyone's management. Um, as I mentioned earlier, diet is a huge part of this. And so that may, you know, include changing things that you're eating and drinking, you know, decreasing caffeine intake, um, whether you're a coffee holic or a diet coke holic, you know, there's always going to be something out there that is a weakness for all of us. 
uh, and it may be one of the parts uh, of the problem here for you. Exercise is also going to be a key element, you know, especially pelvic floor strengthening. Um, physical therapists are, uh, you know, all over the place to help with pelvic floor therapy. It's a common uh, therapy used, but not something that's talked about very much. Um, we all understand it's not very sexy to walk around and talk with your friends about your pelvic floor exercises. But the shocking thing is, if you were to bring that up with your friends, you may be amazed at how many have actually had a conversation uh, with a physician or a therapist and actually undergone some form of management for that. Medications will absolutely always play a huge role in the management of overactive bladder and fecal incontinence. Um, medications, especially for overactive bladder, you know, uh, do have a plethora of options. There's uh, several different classes that we use of medications, all with their own uh, benefits, uh, mechanisms of action, and certainly, um, unfortunately, like all medicines, side effects. Um, and so these medications are going to be helping the muscle, but not the nerves. And so as we talked about this problem mainly being a communication issue, already there is a limitation to medications. Um, they are something you do have to take regularly. Um, and so in about uh, uh, most patients, you know, will go through multiple different types of medications before they find the one that works for them. Um, and that is one of the main reasons that many people do lose faith and, and hope in this process. They get worried that uh, every medicine they try doesn't help them, doesn't fix the problem. Uh, they run into side effects and they feel that, you know, anything they do to try and fix their concerns with their overactive bladder uh, are just going to lead to further uh, side effects and complications. Um, a recent survey showed recently that 72% uh, of people actually stopped taking bladder medications within six months. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of that's going to be due to side effects. A lot of that's due to them not getting the benefit that they expected or had hoped would be achieved. Um, Definitely one of the most important things to know about these side effects you know, is that dry mouth, blurry vision, constipation, those are extremely common side effects, but things can get much more severe. There are medications that can increase your blood pressure. So if you're someone dealing with chronic blood pressure issues, certainly a concern. Um, there's also uh, you know, concerns for mental confusion, especially in patients over the age of uh, 65 and 70. Um, and some of the classes of medicines we use can cause problems with uh, confusion and, and deterioration of your mental status. So certainly this is something uh, you know, we would take into consideration. We have to look at every single patient differently and think what would be safe for them to take, what would not. And then we have advanced therapies. And so advanced therapies are really uh, there for you if conservative treatment options like diet, lifestyle changes, medications do not work. Um, the, you know, one of the things about um, uh, advanced therapies is that you, know, you have different ones for bladder control, different ones for bowel control. But one thing you'll see there is that Medtronic Interstim Systems is across the board, something that can help both. And so one of the main uh, advanced therapies that has been used in the past for overactive bladder is Botox injections. Uh, Botox is not just for those uh, beautiful foreheads uh, that you'll hear on uh, uh, all the celebrity shows. No, there's more to Botox than uh, just cosmetics. And so we can make your bladder beautiful as well and give it a uh, significant improvement in the overactive bladder. This does work for many patients, but it of course is a medicine and it does unfortunately have a list of side effects that we always have to be concerned about. Uh, Botox basically works by uh, injecting a, a chemical into the bladder wall and that actually will paralyze the bladder muscle that it comes in contact with. The purpose here is to help control those bladder muscles that are overacting uh, to give you a little more control over the bladder. Um, unfortunately, because of that paralysis that is induced, this can potentially lead to the need to self-catheterize patients. Um, unfortunately, bladder Botox also is one of those um, uh, same category of medicines that many patients stop after several treatments, uh, just like the oral medications, simply because of either losing efficacy or those concerns for the side effects, especially the need to self-catheterize. Um, while that's not a permanent uh, catheterization need for uh, many people, that can be something that lasts up to six to nine months. And so while, yes, it would solve your overactive bladder problem, one of my concerns would be not wanting to replace your overactive bladder with another urinary retention problem.
And so we're going to then talk a little bit more in depth about the sacral neuromodulation. Um, this is uh, something uh, Medtronic has created with the interstim systems. Um, and this is essentially a very gentle way to uh, restore that communication pathway between the bladder and the bowel, the bladder, or sorry, the brain and the bladder and the brain and the bowel. Um, and this is something that will allow us to uh, regenerate those pathways, uh, give your bladder basically the signaling it needs, give your bowel the signaling it's looking for from the brain. Uh, you know, something that is, uh, I, I'll say to many of my patients is that your brain always knows the, you know, the process here. It knows what the right answer for your bladder and bowel are. Um, there's no one's brain who's, uh, you know, when you're walking down the aisle in the grocery store, that's saying, ah, this is a great spot for me to go to the bathroom. It just doesn't happen. You know, your brain always has the right solution, yet your bladder and bowels don't always listen. And that's what we want to restore. We want to bring back. Um, the neural stimulation is essentially uh, a test that uh, we, we would first initially do um, uh, what we call a peripheral nerve evaluation. We would see if you are a good candidate for it and see if this works. Um, if it does, then you know, we would want to move forward with the actual device because that's obviously something that would provide a great benefit to you. So I'm going to move forward a little and talk about that actual test. Um, you know, essentially you get to try it before you buy it type scenario. Um, you know, everyone wants to know something's going to work before they commit to it. And this is your opportunity. Basically, this test lets us uh, try that therapy out, seeing if you get control of your bowels, control of your bladders, um, and helps you and myself to make that decision that this is the right answer for you. Um, you know, essentially what we do here is place a tiny little wire um, uh, into the upper part of the buttock, and that allows us to actually control uh, through the use of a little uh, uh, battery generator, um, the nerves going down to the bladder and, and provide that signal amplification, the, the communication that we know your brain is trying to tell the bowel and the bladder. Um, it allows you to actually get a little control over this so you can actually start and stop the therapy during that trial. You can adjust it as we need to. The idea here is to basically allow you to test drive this to see whether or not this is the good solution. Um, you'll generally use this test uh, for about three days for most of my patients um, because that's really all I need to show that this is a great solution for you. During the uh, trial, we do always have you try um, to do your best to track the symptoms. Um, and I'll always have you do that actually before and after the test, um, because sometimes it is uh, uh, the most obvious when you look at some objective data that you've recorded yourself and you can see the difference. Um, for many patients, the test is actually uh, almost uh, instantaneous in providing those results. While for most people, I'm supposed to say it can go up to you know, about six hours to 12 hours before you see the difference, which in and of itself is quite amazing um, since most medications will take up to six weeks to provide any instance of improvement. Um, I have actually had experiences with many of my patients where uh, they will know right away that it works. They'll be seeing me about five minutes later after I place the leads. Um, and just recently, I had a lady who um, broke down in tears the second we started talking about it because she immediately felt no further urgency. It was the first time in 35 years she didn't have that sudden need to go to the bathroom constantly. Um, she didn't know that was possible. She thought that was just how life was. And it was such an amazing feeling for her uh, to see that right away. Um, it's giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. I mean, it's amazing what it can really do to restore that uh, and what kind of an impact that's made for her life already. And so, you know, overall with the uh, therapy with you know, neuromodulation and with Interstim, um, it is very safe, very effective. Um, it has proven itself time and time again. Um, you know, my patients over and over are you know, coming back to me saying, why didn't I consider this sooner? Um, you know, numbers that, you know, absolutely I can attest to, you know, 89% of people using this uh, for bowel control therapy um, have seen extreme long-term success. You know, that's wonderful to see uh, patients who have been suffering from such a big problem have such a huge improvement. Um, quality of life across the board is, you know, something that is most important for these patients. And you just see time and time again, how much they improve their lives. Um, and, and definitely the numbers hold for bladder control. I mean, this is just a proven therapy. 
And definitely when you think back to uh, comparison with some of those other therapies we talked about, you know, where over 50% of patients with you know, bladder uh, Botox injections and even more patients with the medications are ending their therapies after uh, just a few cycles. Um, this is something we're seeing a lot of patients see success that lasts. And so how do you know if this therapy is right for you? Uh, well, you know, the first thing to think about is, okay, am I suffering from the symptoms that we've talked about? Does this sound like something that's been bothering me? Um, if you have those symptoms of overactive bladder, if you have issues with retention, you know, that's one thing I didn't, you know, focus a lot on during the talk, but this still can help with those uh, patients out there who are not able to get urine out. Um, and, and you'll see on the slide, the non-obstructive, don't worry about it. That's something that yours is non-obstructive versus obstructive. That's something that I can help you figure out. That's where I'm, I come in and I'm, I'm here for you. Um, and then, you know, if you've tried the lifestyle changes we've talked about, especially if you've tried oral medications or even bladder Botox, um, and you've just not found the right fit of therapy, uh, then I would encourage you to come sit down, talk with me, learn a little more about this uh, new, new pathway and, and see whether or not we can get you on the road to uh, success in, in the treatment you're looking for. And so, you know, once again, the, the common things I'm seeing from my patients after they're going through this, you know, I'm getting back to doing the things I love. And that means everything. Um, you know, essentially, you're not living around the bathroom anymore. You're not uh, uh, devoting your life to making sure you don't suffer from embarrassing moments. Um, that's what I'm here for is to help fix those problems. Um, and so I do want to say thank you very much for joining us for the call tonight. Um, it's been my pleasure to get to provide just a little more information on this whole process to you all. Um, and once again, invite you to you know, come and, and meet with me, sit down, let me talk to you more about the care pathway, uh, and, and let me teach you how I can uh, you know, get you to the lifestyle and the success you're looking for. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ostrowski. And let's just take a quick second. If anybody has any questions, please put them in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be happy to answer them. All right, Dr. Ostrowski. So one of the questions is, is this covered by insurance? So absolutely. Um, you know, part of our care pathway is built around making sure we know uh, what is gonna ultimately be the right solution for you and ensuring we're getting to those right goals. But the other portion of the pathway is to make sure that you're not having to deal with a financial stress through it all. Um, we have a team of financial assistants with insurance expertise who are gonna make sure that across the board, uh, we're helping to cover um, all those questions about insurance, uh, making sure that the right boxes are checked uh, so that when you finally get through the process, you know, all you have to worry about is uh, what new kind of clothing you want to buy. Are you going to pick the white dress or the, the red dress when you go out on that wonderful new date? Um, no, we take care of all that stress for you. And so across the board, I, I have not seen any issues with that. Okay. And then another question is, where are you located? So I work out of our Canton location and our Marietta location. Uh, the Canton location is very close to um, uh, just the exit uh, 20 on 575. We're located um, right by the main shopping center there off Riverstone Parkway. And then my Marietta location is down um, uh, right where 575 and 75 intersect. Uh, you may be more familiar with Kennestone Hospital, and we are uh, essentially a few blocks off um, or before you would get to Kennestone. So we have a building and offices in both those locations. Okay, great. And then another question, um, does Medicare usually cover InterSTEM? Absolutely. You know, definitely across the board, um, you know, Medicare recognizes that uh, a lot of its patient population who are under Medicare coverage um, are going to be suffering from these kinds of problems and, and definitely something we've not had any issues getting coverage for. Okay, we've got another one. Do you wear this for life? So the actual device itself, um, after you, you know, tried it out and you find it is good for you, it is something that would be uh, implanted and it's put in a very discreet position in the back. Um, and it is something that would be there for life. 
Uh, the device itself does have a 15-year uh, battery um, in average form, and there also is a rechargeable device that can be utilized. Uh, but essentially, these are things that you know are discreetly hidden, not anything you have to maintain or deal with on a regular basis. Um, definitely a, a, a very um, easy option for as far as the maintenance goes. Um, and then if the uh, device did need to be changed out ever for you know battery life, um, it's a very simple five minute procedure to do so. And uh, so nothing we're talking about is very complicated um, and definitely uh, uh, worth it in the long run. Okay, and then can you have an MRI with this device in place? It's a very good question. Uh, and so previously, some of these devices were not compatible with uh, MRIs simply because of the, the metals within them. Um, I'm pleased to announce though that that is not a concern for uh, this device. This is something that is MRI safe. Um, and definitely um, uh, we have uh, ways of uh, ensuring that that's not gonna be a problem for you. There's even a MRI safe mode that's built into the programming of the device. So um, always considered MRI safe. Okay, great, thank you. And then there's another question. Um, is your network with VA, the VA? And so in, in regards to VA network, generally as I understand it, um, there is a way to uh, get a referral into our practice. Um, usually through your primary care provider at the VA. Um, and so uh, certainly that is something we would be happy to help answer more. Um, I know there's a phone number listed on the screen there. What I would encourage you to do is uh, go ahead at some point, um, you know, when you have time, call that number um, and, and ask to speak to one of our um, uh, trained representatives who can help to establish that um, referral for you and, and help to get you in with our practice. Okay, and then this person says, I've seen at least three doctors for this problem. Why haven't I heard about Interstim before? It's a great question. And so, you know, certainly a lot of this is going to come down to the experience of your provider and what they're familiar with. Um, you know, just understanding the mechanism behind it. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, different pathways to manage this. And sometimes, um, you know, that's uh, something that uh, you just have to get out there and get exposure to it to learn about it. Um, definitely a lot of people find a comfort zone for what they are willing to treat, um, or it's just not an area of interest to them. So they have a few items they're willing to, to talk to you about. Um, and, and, and that's about it. This is definitely something that, as I mentioned, is very near to me. It's very um, not much my passion in making sure I'm helping patients in this area. And so I've, I've made it a point to uh, keep myself abreast of all the, the latest options and, and keep myself at that forefront. Um, and I definitely think Interstim with Medtronic is right there. All right. And then um, what does the stimulation feel like? So for most people, the stimulation is actually almost, uh, you know, so subtle, they don't even notice it. But uh, many of my patients describe it as a very faint uh, tingling, um, generally down either in the perineum or, uh, you know, for women in the vagina or men can feel that more in like the base of their scrotum. Um, and it's a very subtle tingling, you know, it's, there's no pain to it. It's not supposed to be painful or, or sharp. Um, basically, the idea is that you're supposed to be able to set the device and forget it. Uh, so set it, forget it, and making it uh, very, uh, 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 I guess, daily user-friendly uh, so that you go about your life and you're not actually having to think about your bowel or bladder problems anymore. Um, so definitely nothing that is uncomfortable or um, uh, bothersome. Okay. And then do you take Ambetter? We do. Okay. And um, one, one last one, unless any more come in. Um, in regards to the test, how will I know if this therapy works for me? So essentially the test that we run will let you see what the actual device can do. And so for many people, let's say your main issue is urge incontinence, they'll see almost an immediate reduction in their urgency in those incontinence episodes. Um, you know, I have patients who will literally go from having to go wear four or five, six pads a day that they're saturating um, to within about 12 to 24 hours, um, maybe not even having to feel like they need to wear a pad. Uh, so it's a pretty drastic improvement. Some people um, will only see maybe a 50% improvement with the test, but that's okay. The idea of the test is to show you that you can get improvement in those symptoms. 
Um, one of the things I like to say is the test is sort of like riding the bicycle, uh, and then the actual device itself is sort of like driving the Ferrari. Um, you're talking about something that can be highly customized is just the, the high end version. Uh, so definitely it's something that we can specify even greater to making it work best for you, but um, you'll know pretty quickly if it's going to help. Okay, and then um, would I have to carry a card or would this interfere with flying at all? So it does not interfere with flying. Um, and essentially uh, the device does come with a communication um, uh, phone essentially that you would get with the device. And that's how you can actually program and control it. There will be a card that you can have in case there's an issue at the airport with the FAA, you know, to show that you do have a medical device um, that is uh, approved. Um, and so those are, will definitely be available for you. I do even believe um, uh, there are digital versions of it, but um, I would have to uh, confirm that with the Medtronic reps. I don't want to speak out of term, but I do believe there's a, a lot of options that can be available for you. So you're not always having to worry about, did I bring that? Okay, I don't see any more questions. Um, so if that's it, I just want to Oh, there's one more device, how, or one more question, how long is the device in for? Um, I think we answered that earlier, but if you just want to touch on it. Yeah, essentially, um, you know, it, it's, it's as long as the device is working. And so, you know, the, the device basically constantly does its work and, and constantly makes the uh, communication signaling um, uh, kind of restore between the brain and the bladder and bowel. Uh, and so for the current devices that Medtronic has out, the um, one with a battery in it is useful for up to 15 years. Uh, so that can stay in that long. And then if we get to 15 years and the device is low battery and needs to be changed out, five minute procedure to do that. All right, I don't see any more questions. So thank you so much, Dr. Ostrowski for hosting this event with us tonight. It was extremely informative and we are grateful for your time. And thank you all for joining us as well. Um, if, please jot down the phone number for Dr. Ostrowski's office that's on the screen right now so you can schedule an appointment. Um, much of what was discussed tonight is relevant to many of you, but each and every person is unique. So it's always beneficial to make an appointment and discuss with Dr. Ostrowski. And if you don't mind, please fill out the short anonymous survey once the event concludes. It will appear on your screen on your screen and will also be emailed to you all. Thank you so much again and good night.